As one of the most iconic characters of all time, Spider-Man's most useful gadget, the web shooters, are equally as famous. And although he uses them every single day, the web shooters are arguably the most powerful weapon at Spider-Man's disposal. So today we're going to be taking a look at their origins, how they work, the different types of webbing that Spider-Man has created, and a little bit of extra trivia to boot. So let's dive in. The web shooters were originally created by Peter Parker in literally his first appearance in Amazing Fantasy, when he realized that he had the powers of a spider, but not their most iconic ability webs. It was later retconned in Amazing Spider-Man number negative one, because those were a thing, that Peter actually started developing the web shooters before he was bitten by the radioactive spider. See, he was inspired by some comic books that his Uncle Ben left in the attic, and he wanted to design some superhero gear of his own. I personally really like this addition to the lore, since even though Peter is a genius, making the web shooters from scratch in basically no time at all is a bit of a stretch. At least with this, it's a little bit more believable. Also, let's be real. Of course Peter would invent something like this even before becoming a superhero. What kind of dorky genius wouldn't do something like that? For the webs themselves, the exact chemical makeup and recipe of the fluid is still unknown to this day, but apparently it's similar to nylon. The Spider-Man specific edition of the official handbook of the Marvel Universe says this about how it works. Quote, because the fluid almost instantly sublimates from solid to liquid when under sheer pressure and is not adhesive in its anaerobic liquid slash solid phase transition point, there is no clogging of the web shooter's parts. I'll be real, I don't really know what I just read, but there you go. Spider-Man keeps his web fluid in special cartridges that are pressurized to 300 pounds per square inch. He also keeps extra doses on a belt underneath his costume which holds around 30. In a pinch, these cartridges can be cracked open to unleash a lot of webbing all at once. The basic web fluid has also changed over the years. For example, Dr. Octopus made it to where Spider-Man's web wouldn't stick to his glasses anymore, which proved to be a hassle considering that's Spidey's favorite way of blinding his opponents. A few decades later, Peter changed up the formula, and bam, it sticks. Another example is a fun inversion of this. So Doc Ock once took over Peter Parker's body to become a superior Spider-Man, and tweaked the web fluid formula to make it stronger in nearly every way. Well, when Peter eventually got his body back, his costume was destroyed in a battle with a villain that controls fabric. In a pinch, Peter thwipped up some spidey whiteies, but because he wasn't used to Ock's new formula, he couldn't get it off his junk for quite a while. Now, because the formula changes a lot, the exact time that the webs take to dissolve has varied over the years, but it generally takes between one and two hours, and some formulas can also be removed with a special solvent. Regardless, his webs apparently leave a weird odor even when it dissolves. The basic webbing is strong, being 90% fireproof, having tensile strength of 120 pounds per square millimeter, and in general are 2.62 times stronger than steel. In fact, it's been stated that if their size was increased to just half an inch, one strand of webbing would be strong enough to subdue the thing. Plus, we also can't forget that with enough force, the webs are strong enough to snap the neck of a falling Gwen Stacy. The current size makes it extremely aerodynamic, being able to fire around 20 yards horizontally, about 15 feet upwards, and a maximum distance of close to 50 yards when it's fired in a parabolic arc. This standard webbing isn't actually the only kind that Spider-Man has at his disposal though, which is why I've done some stupidly in-depth research over the different delivery methods, types of webbing, and formulas that Peter and company have developed over the years. While the standard strands of web are Peter's go-to, the first incarnation of the web shooters allowed him to dispense the fluid in a wide spray, and a paste as well. Peter has also gotten so good with his webs that he can actually create constructs like a Green Lantern, including barriers, shields, parachutes, safety nets, skis, a raft, clubs, or even bouncy balls. My favorites though might have to be this figure of a woman and a web bat. No, not that one. I mean the flying mammal kind. As for different types of webs, we're going to be here a while, so buckle in. Probably the first specialty webbing in Spider-Man's arsenal are the ice webs. These were made to combat the Human Torch, and despite being icy, they're durable enough to withstand a hammer. There's also magnetic webbing for blocking radio frequencies, lead-lined webs for containing radioactive material, and acid webs that Peter made alongside Dr. Kurt Connors to help defeat the Rhino that he keeps in a special green cartridge. However, Peter isn't the only one that created the novelty webbing that he regularly uses. For example, his clone Ben Riley developed impact webs 
webbing, which are concentrated web pellets that explode and quickly envelop a target. Parker would later add it to his regular arsenal. Back to Superior Spider-Man, Doc Ock created special fire and sonic disrupting webs that are perfect for battling symbiotes. Spider-Man isn't normally known to carry more than three different types of webs on him at a given time, but when he was using this high-tech armor, it could swap out different cartridges on the fly. Cartridge 3 was acid webs, number 4 were sonic disruptors, and 6 are the bug zappers, microcoiled Z-metal that Peter could run electricity through. I have no idea what Z-metal is supposed to be, and since the wiki can't help me, I'm just going to have to assume that it's a barn of sorts because that's what Google led me to. Where was I? All right, uh, cartridge seven is quick drying web cement, AKA concrete webbing, and number eight is expanding web foam. Now you might've noticed that those are cartridges three, four, six, seven, and eight, which leaves some blanks. And believe me, I tried to fill them in, but I got nothing. So I reached out to Dan Slott, the guy who wrote all of this on Twitter. And to my surprise, Dan actually got back to me and said that two of the other cartridges are for sure the standard webs and impact webbing. The last one was either ice webs, instant web net, or an instant web shoot. Admittedly, it had been a while, so he didn't remember which, and can you really blame him? Outside of various webbings, the web shooters are able to fire other gadgets, including spider tracers, and my personal favorite, Ben Riley stingers. Yet, while shooting webs might might seem as simple as Spider-Man pressing down his middle and ring fingers, it's actually a bit more complicated than that. See, the switches for the shooters are located higher up on the palm to avoid most unwanted firings. Additionally, they require a quick double tap to fire, which further prevents accidental discharges when he forms a fist. If that's not enough, Peter has also upgraded his web shooters with voice commands for additional versatility, including a web barrage, wide nets, and the ability to recoil a strand of web. I really hope that this goes to show that these devices are an essential tool for Spider-Man, and the web shooters are not only an overlooked part of his arsenal, but his most versatile and most powerful ones to boot. I'm sure that I missed some small tidbits because, dude, Spider-Man has been in thousands of books, but I'm satisfied with the info that I was able to grab. I know this video was all about the web shooters, but I'm sure some of you guys are probably wondering about the organic webs that Peter had in the Sam Raimi trilogy. Well, those did get adopted into the comics, and it was weird, I have an entire video about it. But long story short, he got them from a kiss, and then they went away because comics. Go, go watch that video. But I've got a question for you guys. If you could create a special kind of webbing for Spider-Man's web shooters, then what would it be? Let me know down there in the comments below. But I also want to give a quick shout out to at AwesomeMix360 for retweeting my last video. If you want a shout out, then just go ahead and follow me on Twitter, at TrailerDrake, retweet this video, and who knows, maybe it'll be you next time. But if you like this video, then why not consider subscribing or even watching another one? And yeah, if you want to know more about organic webs, I got an entire video about that, so go nuts. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.